So where's she moved more, Julia? Um, just up the river there, Bob. Just, just off the, off the um, end of Walden Field Quay. Where, where is this flag from? A oh. clue, I know, I can see a clue there. <laughs> no, it's the Woodbridge Cruising Club um, flag because we're members of the Woodbridge Cruising Club. But obviously as Woodbridge is straight across the river from Sutton Hoo, um, they think of the early cruisers who might have been the Vikings, um, who might have come across to Woodbridge. Tell us where we are. Ah, oh, we're at Waldring Field, um, which, which is a great place for Peter Duck because well, this was where my parents had Peter Duck, um, not directly from Arthur Ransom, um, but back in 1957 they brought her. But before that, um, Ransom came to Aldering Field and met my parents in order to rent a little boat um, that they had in those days. Because um, Dad had come out, it, it was after the war, and Dad had come out from the Navy and he was trying to earn on this penny. One of the things, he and Mum had a boat, um, so they would charter it to people. And a couple of the people who came to Waldering Field to charter the boat were Arthur and Evgenia Ransom. Um, but then they moved off the way down to the south coast. Um, and Peter Duck came back up here. So my first memories are being a child on this beach um, with Peter Duck more just off the beach. Um, my granny living in the old maltings. Um, my uncle was a yacht designer and he was working from the top of the old maltings and dad had started his business and said, well, so we are Bob in, in, a, in a very good spot. It was a lot less full, the anchorage in those days. I mean, now when you're looking around, you know, you'll see boats from end to end, but, but that's all right, you know, and it's a, it's an accessible place to come and there's a very good sailing club um, where my grandchildren sail their dinghies and um, they're, they're actually my oldest granddaughter's just um, qualified for the Cadet World Championships from this sailing club. So Walding Field to us is a it's, a, it's a four generation, no five generation place, five generation, granny, dad, me, um, my children and my grandchildren. That's five generations of us um, and Peter Duck has been known by all of them. That's, that's my Peter the Great mug. Quite an adventurous adventure. It's a lovely sound, isn't it? The sound mm. of sausages sizzling away. Mm. When I was little, that, that was my um, bunk. Bob. Oh, was it? Uh, yeah, so I was right opposite there. And so you know, when Dad or Mum were cooking, I was... <laughs> Brilliant. It was a great bunk to get out of the way in as well. You know, things got a bit stressful. I would be in my bunk. That's why That's why um, I'm such a great reader, because I was always getting out of the way. When Dad was tussling with the engine or something, I was in there hiding away with a book. Um. Well, then, Apparently he started his breakfast a bit early. A bit unofficial. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm mm. nicking the ham that was not good for lunch. <laughs> breakfast is always the best part of the day, isn't it, on a boat? It's a very good part of the day. Mind you, you can have breakfast at any time of the day on a boat. Right. So, breakfast, lunch and supper are all yeah. really breakfast. So if you so. started particularly early, which of course one often does, if you're trying to get out of the river on the tide, then you know breakfast at lunchtime is a very fine breakfast. But what I'm amazed by is I, I, so I, I do all this, you know, reading and book reviewing and stuff. And, and, and people, they've, they've got ovens, they've got bread makers. They talk about, oh, let's have a double sink on our boat. And we're, we're still just, just about coping with, with a, um, a gas stove and a, and a plastic washing up bowl. Um, so are you officially the Yachting Monthly book reviewer? They call me their literary correspondent. That's what I'm called. I have a title. You can find me on the on the on the on the front page. Yep, 
and it's, it has, I have to say, it's my ideal job. It's an absolutely wonderful job because every month I get to choose a book that I really like and I take an extract out of it and then I review three new books every month. So you're a bookworm then, really, Julia? I've always been a bookworm, Bob. And of course, Peter Duck's a very literary boat. I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't, I was going to say you couldn't grow up on Peter Duck and not be a bookworm. Actually, my brothers grew up on Peter Duck and didn't, but I was the oldest and so I was the the, the child, I think, who, who got the most impact of the fact that, that Peter Duck had got this wonderful sort of literary history. And, yes, yeah, so I would, as I said, dive into my little quarter berth and, you know, quite likely I would be reading Peter Duck on board Peter Duck. So, you know, it was, it was pretty magical. Um, but, you know, I, I, I read and I read and, and I haven't really stopped. <laughs> I, mean, I was going to say, look, I can, I can actually show you my copy of, of Peter Duck. Sorry, it's a very, it's a very neat little thing. This it, it folds, it folds down, so you can have your proper bookshelf. But when you're, you know, sailing, every, all your books don't immediately fly out um, and hit the first plane. But this is the, that's my copy, you see, of, of Peter Duck, which is very, very bad. And that's from Uncle Jack, who was the chap I was telling you about, who was the naval architect, um, and who lived on the top floor at the old maltings um, and yeah to my dear goddaughter julia from uncle jackie so yeah, it's a it's a well-loved book you couldn't it, it, i'd have to tell you that it says peter duck but it does actually say <laughs> peter duck it does i can see it you can good peter duck good. by arthur ransom yes oh i think we might need a fork actually Bertles. Now, Bobby, you one sausage or two? One, please. Just one. With a bit of bread. Just a little bit of bread would be very nice. Right. I Sa think saving, I put... save, saving washing up, if you possibly can. <laughs> I, I have to put the camera down to have my sausage. Good. Thank you. <laughs> we, we can all relax for a minute. <laughs> Back, I'm going to eat that and very well. Solo's not going to have two. Oh, no, that's you... nice, the two of you together, actually, in Solo there. <laughs> That's right. brilliant. Right, it takes many First. sausages as you can then. I've oh, had I'll much, much go for one more. But Solo, your your beautiful dog has already eaten eaten lunch, hasn't she? I'm afraid, I'm afraid so. <laughs> he opened opened the packet of ham, I believe. Um, um, oh, that's, that's not yeah, right. oh, did he? Okay, can you get, get, oh, right, get right, rid right, of that yes. then? Is he in disgrace? A uh, slight disgrace, as you can see him sitting uh, meekly in the corner. He, he's anxious. He's because uh, also normally he's a very good dog and he, he doesn't act up, but he's just had a little bit of a, a little bit of a hiccup. I today. think he's coming into a difficult time of life. I, I think you're going to have. Yeah, he's getting, getting a bit more confidence now. He's yes, he's going to be a teenager. Not so scared of the world. Mm. Yeah. Curiosity may have killed the cat, but it's just got Solo in trouble. <laughs> Poor Solo. I feel sorry <laughs> for Solo. I know we all feel sorry for Solo. That's what dogs do, isn't it? They've got this knack of making people feel sorry for them. <laughs> Lovely new stasel. Duck was built at Pin Mill by the Harry King Yard at Pin, at Pin Mill. She was commissioned from Jack Lawrence Giles in 1945. She's a catch. She's got designedly small sails, very easy for a chap with hernias to handle. And it always makes me feel a bit sad in a way that, that Ransom and his wife Evgenia didn't have any children because she's an absolutely ideal boat for children to learn on as well. She's 28 foot long, she's 8 tonnes, she draws just over, well she draws a metre, um, I was going to say she draws feet, three, 3 foot 6 um, in old money because obviously any boat that's designed for the east coast needs to be relatively shallow draft. She's got a lovely long keel, she's a beautiful sea kindly boat. If you look at her bow you, you'll, you'll see Laurent Giles was really quite proud of he said well it's a little bit motorboaty with the long keel she, she's a she's a proper cruising yacht easy to handle lovely broad side decks she was designed um, well she should have had a 12 horsepower 
engine, but at that period um, when materials were being found in 1945-1946 it was far too difficult to get one so she was at that point given a Stuart Turner 9 horsepower engine which was an absolute pig and I, I if, nowadays um, she has a nice Lister Petter 18 horse, horsepower engine very reliable diesel fine so what is it that's so special about Peter Duck she's special to me because she's a boat that gives you a feeling of safety Able Seaman Titty ransom people will understand what I'm talking about now Titty said whenever Peter Duck was there you knew nothing could go wrong and so that was a fictional character but based on a real old Baltic seaman that Ransom first sailed with um, in his very first yacht in 1922 but translating that into boating terms into a yacht terms the design of Peter Duck she's very stable that's what I meant about that's the importance of her lovely long heavy keel and her beautiful sea kindly lines she's got those lovely broad side decks if you look at a lot of classic yachts you know you're, you're, you're creeping up about sort of six inches of deck if you if you need to go and change the headsails whereas with Peter Duck you've got these lovely broad side decks you can get so if you're a child on Peter Duck your parents can quite happily allow you to scramble about and run free. You don't have to sit there being sort of lashed into the cockpit the whole time. You, you can enjoy yourself, you can relax. When things did get stressful on Peter Duck, she's got those two, we'll, we'll look at them later I hope, those two dog houses either side of the cockpit which were part of Lawrence Giles's design. Although. Arthur and Evgenia Ransom could never have gotten them because they were big people but for children when the going gets tough and your parents need to be doing things as a child you can just pop yourself in a doghouse and you can be looking out and, and you can be part of it and enjoying it but perfectly safe without the sort of fuss um, that, that otherwise has to go on. She, she's a lovely boat for sort of making you feel safe and comfortable and, and sort of at home. If somebody wanted a Peter Duck now, yes, they're, they're quite they're available to be built from plants. Yeah. That's a really interesting question because the answer is yes, and that's quite a surprising answer because m the most of the Peter Duck class were all built 1967, 1968, 1969, and then the same people who would have wanted those boats, you know, would have moved across to you know, buy a Westerly or, or, or something like that. You know, the, the big change to um, glass fibre boats was was happening and, and, and people were doing that. Um, but yes, the Laurent Giles archive is all now online. It's a very interesting archive to look at because you know he was a most um, you know prestigious and, and varied and interesting designer. And yes the Peter Duck plans are available from the Laurent the Peter Duck class plans are available from the Laurent Giles um, archive and I believe there is somebody who is actually now um, building a proper wooden Peter Duck from those plans. I don't have many details but I think that's the truth. I think there is going to be a, a number 39 as it were.